Hey, this is a recording for the problem solving course. I'm Maria and this is Joshik. <laughs> you can call me Josh, thank you. Okay. Josh. I, I call I called Josh by the nickname from the Ask platform. Okay. Yeah. So Josh, tough question. Right away. What are your dreams? What it's really all about when it comes to children and mathematics? I have so many. How do I begin? Um, I think to me, the main dream is really to is to make math both something they love and something that's really, you know, a core part of their intellectual DNA. Um, and that even though, you know, and that, that really is something they can use to solve all the problems of life as they grow older and to really set the stage for a, a, a create a platform for intellectual development. Um, quite frankly, like I feel it did for me, I really believe my math education, even though I'm not in the math, I'm in a technical field, uh, but I would argue most of what I do is not even that technical, but it really made, gave me this foundation for cognitive development for uh, for logic and understanding and 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 an expression that um, I think has really made all the difference in my my you know my career uh, personally and professionally and I, I really want them to have that as well okay so it's a lot uh, to think about it looks like you want mass to be the basis and the foundation of everything. The well, not, not, not the soul. I mean, there are other foundations. I think music is another foundation. I think language and language arts. I think art, the the, the you know the plastic tactical arts. I think there are these. These are the core foundations for intellectual, personal, artistic growth. Uh, but math is one of them, and math is is the one that <clears throat> tends to get left aside as. We have discussed before that a lot of people are afraid of it. A lot of educators are literally afraid of it. I don't want that to be the case in my house or in my children's experience. I want them to come to math the way they come to language, the way they come to art, the way they come to music in the same very open, natural way and, and make that, you know, make that stick for the rest of their lives. So math is not the main thing but it is a foundation and it is something that that kind of permits everything right yes i mean these are all intertwined how do you do math without i mean how do you do music without math how do you do art without math how do you how do you do language linguistics without math um you can you can do them all without it but you can have a much richer experience if the, if math is part of that and that's true of uh, all, all, everything in, in life for you. And it's not necessarily that you will do math or science as a profession, but this, whatever it is you do, mathematics comes into play. Absolutely. It's, it's a core intellectual building block. So, um, okay, I'll tell you a very mundane thing. Uh, every time you touch the table, the camera shakes. <laughs> I will take my hands right. I... I um I do a lot of gesturing with my hands. Okay, I'm sorry. I do too. <laughs> Actually, it was just a minor earthquake in California. That's really what happened. Oh, I hope everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, I I found the correlation between the movements and the earthquake. So it could have been an earthquake, but you were causing it. I was I was actually just balancing myself, trying to. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, so uh, Josh. Uh, here, here is the question then. So this is a big thing, and it it takes a lifetime to accomplish. I mean, to get there, it's it's a big endeavor. So just on the scale of one or two weeks. So we do problems. You know, we just do something short term. Can what? How do, will you make steps towards that big dream? Say, given a problem, what do you do? Given the problem of how do I take a two-week endeavor and fit it into the context of a lifelong... Oh, let's say you look at the mass problem. Right. And uh, when you look at the mass problem, you think of your big dream, right? Right. How does the two come together? A mass problem, a big dream? 
I guess, you know, I, I almost, I mean, I, I'll, I'll answer it the way I obnoxiously answer many questions, which is actually to turn it around and say, I really think of it as more as how do I take the, the mundane, quote unquote, everyday life and, and, and pull the context of math into it. Mm-hmm. So whether it's a simple matter, last night uh, we were visiting my, my mother-in-law, whose birthday it is today, uh, and she very somewhat humorously forgot how old she was. Uh-huh. And um, she said, I think I'm 75, but I was born in uh, 19... I'm going to get this totally wrong. 1936? I'm getting that. I'm going to fit, get the numbers completely wrong, except basically I turned to my seven-year-old son and I said... Can could could seventy five be the solution of a problem that has these two factors, a seven and a six? And he said, No. <laughs> <laughs> he said that would have to be and so I, I sort of turned it around and said, Okay, here is here's her question. Let's not we don't you don't have to do the complex math. Just tell me how do you get to a five if you've got a seven if you're adding a seven and a six? And he said, You really can't. Mm-hmm. And it was just a different, you know, it's just a way to sort of throw a little math thinking into this but i'm necessarily saying can you do you would you please subtract to you know 2013 from 1936 right it's a different and it wasn't the simple straightforward one it was a more how do you think just looking how do you approximate the answer by understanding that you can't get to 75 if you're starting from here Mm -hmm. so i mean that was that that may be um that that's that to me is more almost more interesting than what is the, or maybe that is the answer. There was a math problem there we were trying to solve, but it wasn't the, maybe the math problem that was the obvious one. It was more, let's think about the different, a different way of looking at this. And that's a kind of um, uh, almost more interesting than what is 2013 minus 75. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's a bit more creative. Okay, so um, here we are uh, with the dreams and this ways of connecting. Um, and uh, I hope, I hope you'll try to go the other way too, because uh, we are trying to study these things, how to connect particular given problems to something. Right. Um, so I think problems can inspire too, even when they don't come sp- up spontaneously. I, I mean, the situation you describe is very perfect. Because it's spontaneous, it's about grandma, it's at a party, right. it's something you just came up with, so it has all these cool qualities. Right. So um, m- maybe something like that with the problem. So, uh, and that's what... Uh, hello? I'm here. Okay. Uh, what happened here? Oh. Anyway, my, my screen did a weird thing okay okay you look you look perfectly fine here <laughs> okay yeah it's something on my screen um so uh this is a course right and we're peer learners so i hope to learn this categories of changing the problems that's my hope what do you hope to learn that you haven't learned yet <laughs> Well, I'm, you know, I'm always looking for new approaches, mm-hmm. new ways to, again, make, make math interesting, exciting, to give it context, mm-hmm. uh, to context that's relevant to children and relevant to them, uh, you know, in, in, in this expansive way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, you know, that to me is really, it's, it's about acquiring tools and, and knowledge that I can just hopefully keep applying, um, you know, on, onward and you know, onward and upward beyond just what we do in the next few weeks. Okay, so you hope you hope to. Uh, okay, so I hope you do it too. So you take these problems that we are all looking at, and see how you can adapt them for your kids. How you can make that relevant. See what happens. So uh, questions go on the forum, and okay, uh, if you have a good question about that, about your quest for adapting. I think other people will be interesting, interested in answering too, so you can post it there. Okay. Good. I will. Okay, excellent. And uh, it's really interesting to see what you come up with. Maybe some more grand, grandma problems, or who knows what. 
So, we have a couple of grandmas, so maybe we can work on that. Okay. Yes. But m maybe something with kids' interests, what they aim sure. to, um, we never know. Okay. Uh, never know. Do, do you have any questions or comments about the course so far? I know we're just starting. Not particularly more, you know, I now I now know what my, my next assignment is, so I'm, I'm eager to, to take a look at it and, uh, and get started, actually. Okay, excellent. Okay, I'm going to store, stop the recording. Okay. Thank you. Good, thank you. <laughs>